Archaeologists from the University of Maryland have uncovered the foundations of an 18th century slave village that was briefly the childhood home of Frederick Douglass. Now in its third year of field work, the dig has shed light on the abolitionist's early life. It's taking place on the White House farm near Easton, Maryland, about two hours from Washington, D.C. For him, this, this place and his experience here really encapsulated and represented and symbolized for him the entire phenomenon of plantation slavery. Um, it was while he was here that he says he recognized what it first meant during that time to be a black person in the United States and that, that, that he understood that he was a slave and the full ramifications of that. Armed with only Douglas's own accounts of the slave village, called the Long Green, as well as a reproduction of a questionable historical map of the property, the archaeologists were able to piece together where to dig. When you read Frederick Douglass in his autobiography, he talks about the first time he comes to this property. And what he describes is walking down the same road that you drove in on today. He describes the Long Green as being about 20 acres. Um, and what he talks about is this is open. Um, the trees are probably not here. All of this tall grass is gone. And this whole stretch from here down to the, the very point of land where it goes into the Y River is chock-a-block with buildings. And it's the brick and oyster shell mortar foundations of these buildings, slave quarters, barns, and corn cribs, that the team has slowly uncovered. In its heyday, the White House farm was a 20,000 acre plantation that housed as many as 700 slaves. White House, as an environment, has been there since the late 1650s, or the very early 1660s. So it's 340, 50 years of continuity. That continuity exists in the 11 generations of ownership by the same family who started the plantation. The current caretaker, 87-year-old Mary Tillman, a descendant of settler Edward Lloyd, was immediately gracious about the prospect of strangers literally digging into her family's past. They actually have pretty strong ties in the community locally as well, and what we've discovered over time is that everybody knows each other and they all talk to each other, and they have, you know, there's a, there are relationships between black and white communities on the Eastern Shore today that are generally positive. And it's those surrounding black communities, some of whose residents are direct descendants of the slaves that once worked the tobacco fields at Y House, that Leone approached before starting the dig. In nearby Unionville, he asked parishioners at St. Stephen's African Methodist Church what they wanted to know about their heritage. Their answers ranged from slave spirituality to the relationship between the Lloyd family and the Long Green residents. There is a, um, a, a desire and a specific request for descendant members to actually come and excavate, not just visit, but come and excavate. One of these requests came from a high school student named Ariel Brown whose ancestors lived on the Long Green during Douglas's time. I knew of the plantation, but as far as the slave history, that was never really discussed in my family. Um, they they kind of skipped over that part. I don't know if it was just because it's hard to talk about, but I'm interested to know as much as I can about my history and about my culture. Learning about life and culture on the Long Green and of those who lived just several hundred yards away in the main house, is something the archaeology team would like to get out there beyond the dig. It wouldn't also at all surprise me to see museum exhibits. I really hope so. I mean, this is a very significant site. Truthfully, I think the best end sort of for this project or the best outcome of this project will really just be, I don't know, just being able to bring this into the public consciousness. Clearly, slavery and the aftermaths of slavery are something that still affect American culture. Um, and to be able to literally drag this material out of the ground and to display it in a public way that will get people to talk about this and to actually talk through the differences that exist. I mean, I think that would be the best possible outcome. The Tillman family recently gave the Maryland team permission to dig for three more years. For Discovery News, I'm Jorge Ribas.